Hello and welcome back everyone to Opinionated Lush's Books and Booze, where we invite on indie authors to talk a little bit about the writing process, their books, and to give you a little uh sneak sorry. Give you a little sneak peek into some of their uh some of what they've written. So I'm gonna throw it to Dawn so she can introduce this week's author. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Books and Booze. Uh, today, we have the lovely Melanie Moreland here joining us. Hi, Melanie. How are you? I'm great. How are you, ladies? I Good. am perfect. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, where you're from, um, how long you've been writing. Do you have any pets and what are their names? Um, I am from Canada, um, up north. Yeah! What what north? What north in Canada? Just outside of Toronto. Oh, (laughs) so are we! Really? Yeah. Actually, we're south from Toronto. Oh, yeah. Sorry, south. Yeah. Okay. Am I Toronto? I'm just, I'm in Hamilton, just outside of Hamilton. Oh, my God! Hamilton! (laughs) Shut up! (laughs) Why am I not just at your house then? (laughs) You're you're drinking there. (laughs) because <laughs> i live far away yeah so yeah, I this one over here moved yeah she moved i joined the great migration uh to new brunswick yeah, yeah. we don't like that from new brunswick world yeah it is <laughs> that's fantastic i'm so glad you're oh from hamilton goodness. I did not know you were from Hamilton. Okay, so I have a little okay, I got a little confession. <laughs> when I started to read books again and I went on book talk, your books were actually the very first books I read. Uh, I read the contract, uh, the baby clause, and the amendment, I think it is. I haven't yeah. read the fourth. But then I read Bentley, Van, and all those ones, and I just knew you were from Canada and I was like, love her, I love her. I did not know you were that close to me though. I am. No, fantastic. You know when you're going down the QE and there's that building that sort of faces onto the lake towards Niagara, mm-hmm. and yes. the flat. That's the BAM building that gave me the inspiration for Bentley. Oh, <gasps> okay. Yeah, because I was like, that would be really cool because all the f- things face to the water, and yeah. then there's just the building at the back, and I'm like, that would be expensive. And then when <laughs> Bentley was building this fabulous building i'm like oh, just like the one on the qe <laughs> wow that's, that's amazing. awesome now my my pa karen who you guys have all been dealing with c- says that i'm from canada da da yeah canada da da and i'm i'm not canadian i'm ken i i don't even remember i'm, yeah. I'm and now I, people say where are you from and i have trouble saying canada not canada da 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 <laughs> All those extra like na 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 And if I say something, she's like, "Will you stop speaking Canadian?" I did not <laughs> Can you not learn how to start speaking Canadian? Thank you. I know. And she'll, every so often, she says "a," hey, and I'm like, "Ah, oh, gotcha." <laughs> <laughs> You're one of us now. <laughs> oh, that's, oh that's amazing. So, tell us a little bit about the book you are introducing to us. Um, I am introducing to you um, my favorite kidnapper. Put it there. That mm-hmm. is the illustrated cover that was done by Bigfoot Creation. That's, that's um, a really cute cover. I like that. It is a very yeah. cute cover. It's a very cute, funny book. It's a tongue-in-cheek uh, take on kidnapping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> um, kind of kidnapping sweet. Hello. Of course he is. I uh, my again, Karen. Karen has a huge part. Is a huge part of my life. The two of us are sisters and friends and co-workers, and I'm lost without her. And she is lost without me, even though she won't admit that. <laughs> um, she was in a kidnapping phase where everything she was reading was kidnapping. And I write, since Dawn knows my writing, I write contemporary romance with angst, but not dark, dark. Um, And Karen said to me, write me a kidnapping book. And I said to her, those are pretty dark. I've read a few. And (laughs) you got to go to another level to write that. She's so pleased. Just write me a kidnapping book. So I sat down and started writing this book. And by the end of chapter one, I'm like, this is not going to be dark. This is going to be really funny. (laughs) I wrote about eight chapters and sent it to her and said, 
you're getting your kidnapping book, but it's not exactly what you think it is. <laughs> so basically, Brianna is a very um, feisty young lady, and she's down on her luck. But she makes this fabulous wedding cake that a billion eccentric billionaire uh, happens to steal a cupcake from the wedding cake thinks it's the most delicious thing he's ever ta tasted and she tells him off and she doesn't like to swear so she says things like you mother plucker and when she's really mad she stamps her feet and screams dumbledore she does all sorts of quirky little things and he wants her to bake for him because he's quite intrigued by her she says no and he ends up kidnapping her and taking her to italy to bake for him sounds like a billionaire yeah. <laughs> when you have that much money, you can do whatever the bloody hell you want. Basically. Okay. I mean, yeah. I'd be okay with being kidnapped and taken to Italy, though. I mean. And right. he's, he's a very thoughtful kidnapper because he brings her cat. So he catnaps her cat. Perfect. <laughs> if he takes all six of my dogs, I'm in. So, of course, they end up falling in love and there's a happy ever after. But it was a very funny story to write because I took every sort of thing that, you know, about kidnapping and turned it into something funny. She tells them off all the time. She tells everyone that she's he's kidnapped her. Of course, nobody believes her. So, I mean, someone tells me I'm kidnapped and taken to Italy. I don't think people are going to believe me either. They'll be like, yeah, right. You went there on your own. Yeah. And you brought my cat. Yeah. Yeah. About my guy. Yeah. <laughs> so um so it's a very funny book. Um it's been very well received. We sent it to a lot of people. We weren't sure if they would even read it since they tend to like the darker stuff, but they all agreed that it's sort of a breath of fresh air, yet funny, but still gives them what they want. So it's, nice. Um, I'm excited to hear it because like I'll uh, for those that know, I don't read any romance. So whenever we have authors on here, like reading anything out of my comfort genres, it's always like interesting to like see the other side. So what are you into? <laughs> Fantasy? Horror. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, Sonya's into sci-fi. So kind of fantasy, but. They're the same. They go in the same world. Fantasy's like medieval magic and sci-fi is science magic it's the same thing okay <laughs> except ones in not on the planet that's the only difference it's, they're both sci-fi happens planet. on that's earth cool. all the time that's right back to the future cloning okay, okay. okay. <laughs> whatever i don't clearly i don't read that so whatever <laughs> Unless it's monsters, it's smut, then fine. <laughs> Monster smut counts as fantasy, by the way. Just so you oh, know. Oh, so you like the big blue beans on other planets? I love tentacles. Women? <laughs> <laughs> Next, can you write me a book about tentacles? Thank you. <laughs> Get in line. Karen has a list of books she wants. <laughs> so we, what she's saying is we need to sway Karen. That's yeah. And that's yeah. how we For get the book. book. Yeah. Everybody knows that if you want something from Melanie, you get on Karen's good side. <laughs> Me and, and Karen, Karen we go to bat for you. <laughs> We're already talking all the time. We're besties. Yeah. So like, I'm, I'm just getting slowly in there. <laughs> hey, I guess I better learn about tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Just okay. What I are the good I answered tonight? your questions. I have a yeah. cat and her name is Amber. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yes. No, yeah, we got so sidetracked about Hamilton and tentacles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think there's a lot of tentacles in Hamilton, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, not the ones you want. Not the ones. Yeah, yeah not, not the ones you want. Not the fun ones. <laughs> yeah. All right. I have our drink words here. Um, so there's cake, art, B. Lips and old man. <sighs> yes. All right. We're going to mute ourselves so you can uh, read freely and so we can drink and laugh without interrupting you. Yep. Start whenever you're comfortable and just let us know when you're finished. You know what? I don't think you're going to, when I look at the thing I'm going to read, I don't think you're going to be drinking much at all. <laughs> we'll, still we'll, drink. Drink. Yeah, we'll still drink. We'll still drink. I'm going to read a really short thing because I read really badly. And then I'm oh, going to get off right. and kick Karen's ass, but you guys are fine. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so um, we'll start here. Oh, little bee. Isn't that one of the words? <laughs> I have a feeling that our negotiations are going to take a while. God knows I'll need to eat to keep up my strength. He winked. You're supposed to be grumpy. Everyone described you as grumpy, I said without thinking. I am grumpy most of the time. I don't like people much. I hate crowds, weddings, that sort of thing. I tend to tell people what to do and they don't like that. Really, I replied sarcastically, indicating my plate. But you're eating. Your little sidekicks jumped to attention when I told them what to do. Most people want to be led and I excel at it. Much of an ego for an old man, I muttered around a mouthful. <laughs> Confident he couldn't hear me. My ego isn't the only large thing I have, he replied, draining his coffee and ignoring me as I sputtered. As for being grumpy with you, I find it difficult. You make me want to smile. I finished all I could eat, push, pushing away my plate. He didn't argue with me and smiled at Gladys as she cleared off the table. More coffee, she asked. He nodded. Excellent brew. Is your pie as good as your coffee? Even better. Two pieces, then. You pick which kinds. I love them all. She waddled off happy. Do you make pies, he asked. No, my hands just ruin the pastry all the time. Cakes, yes. Pies, no. Not an issue. I prefer cakes. I assume you have a function or some other pressing matter you need a cake for. That is your business proposition. He waited until Gladys filled his cup, set down two large pieces of pie, and left. He tilted his head, studying me. Partially, but my proposal is more um, personal. His voice was lower than before, raspier. It sounded intimate. His eyes became intense again, his gaze heated. I felt a shiver run down my spine that had nothing to do with cold and everything to do with him. Uh, personal, I asked. He nodded. I felt my eyes widen. I am not selling you my virginity. It was his turn to sputter. That's all I'm reading. <laughs> You're like, no more. No more. No, you know, that's, fine. <laughs> that's fine. That was like, you said cake like three times in a row. And I was just like, yeah, oh my like God, right yeah, she another, said yeah. we weren't drinking. <laughs> what? <laughs> she lied. <laughs> okay, there you go. Oh, That's, um, very up, like, like it's very um, upbeat. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's just the way you're reading it. Maybe you're just reading it that way, but it's very, like, it's lots very... of energy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Sometimes it, I don't, mind, I don't get Could be the vodka. Older. Why yeah. <laughs> <Lots> to <of> help? <laughs> it helps everything. Love it. Absolutely. Um, what um inspired you other than your um PA? Yeah. Right. <laughs> this book. Um the idea was floating around in my head for a funny book and something to do with um baking. I'm a big baker. I love to bake. I love to cook, but I love to bake. Christmas time around here. I mean, you girls should really drop by. <laughs> we are now. Yeah. We'll email your address. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Days cooking and baking and decorating cake or cookies and all sorts of stuff. And I take platters to my doctor and my dentist and my pharmacist and everything. So I love to bake. And so that's in a lot of my books, the, the heroines are often can cook and bake. But this one, I just wanted something a little more intense. And the idea, I had this idea for a really fancy cake. And then the story just slowly evolved. And I got the idea Christmas Eve, I was at my sister in law's in Ottawa. And this idea that happens to writers, these ideas just sort of, i I mute the conversation around me and the idea starts to take hold. And we went back to the hotel and I got on my laptop and I start typing away. And my husband's like, what are you doing? I said, I just have this idea. I just, I just need to get it out just a little bit. And then boxing day, we were driving home and I was like this on my computer and the book was done by the middle of January. It was oh, one wow. of those books <laughs> that I could literally not stop writing. Once the words were there, once the idea was there, um, and then something happened between Christmas and New Year's, and it's in the book, a conversation happened with some friends. Everyone was literally on the ground screaming with laughter over this stupid conversation, and I'm like, that has got to get into this book somehow. That's and amazing. Hmm? 
That is amazing. Yes, it was just, I don't even know how the conversation started, but it was so funny. And I phoned Karen and I repeated the conversation. And when Karen laughs sometimes, she doesn't make a noise. So all I can hear is, <laughs> is and I knew I had it. She's like, is that going in the book? I'm like, absolutely. So people keep commenting on this conversation in the book. That's ridiculous. But it worked perfectly. Um, so the the idea just sort of grew just from a little, just an idea of a pretty cake and somebody stealing a cupcake. I love it. That's so adorable and so original. Like you, you're not going to see that again. No. <laughs> Karen said to me, this is, you're, you're not poking fun at kidnapping, but you're, you're turning it on its head. And I said, yes. I said, no one else has done this. I said, no. dark kidnapping is usually pretty darn dark. Even yeah, if they yeah. fall in love, there's always, you know, there's ropes and chains and cages. There's none of that here. You know, he buys her anything she wants and she has a run of his villa. Like, kidnap me, please, for God's sake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry it's, to yeah. it's how we fantasize kidnapping. Yes. Yeah. Like, that's it's what how it we is. we wished it would happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're like, <laughs> yes, this is how I want to be kidnapped, actually. Yes, exactly. Take it on a private jet and wake up in Italy. Hello. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. And I have to cook a cake a day? Oh, my God. <laughs> that's punishment. <laughs> how well, dare you? You said, so this idea from conception took only a couple weeks to write. About, How about three and a half weeks. That's yeah. insane. First <laughs> off, <laughs> how long on average does it take you? Because you've written other books. Like how long on average does it take you to like write out a book? Usually a month, usually, or six weeks. It depends on the book and how it flows. And when I first started doing this, I could, I could sit and write for eight hours I can't anymore. I'm 61. My shoulders start to hurt. My back starts to hurt. My hips hurt from sitting. So two hours and then I have to get up and do whatever, then back at it for a couple hours. But even then four hours a day, I'm done. That's and my hips, lot. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm, that's still a lot. Like, and that's so fast. I try and get about 3000 words done a day, but with this one, it would be eight or 10. And I said to Karen, it's going to be a short book. It'll be about 45,000. I think it's 87,000. <laughs> plus <laughs> plus the extended writing, epilogue. Yeah. And I had to do an outtake because they wouldn't shut up. <laughs> and Karen, I said to Karen, we'll put it out in the spring. She's like, no, it's going out in September. I'm like, September? <laughs> She's like, you've got other books. She says, and I have a whole marketing plan. And I don't know if you guys saw, she sent out puzzles to people to put together with the book she sent out all sorts of stuff she had cookies made PR for her. boxes i PR see them boxes. and i was just like wow those are amazing looking yes. custom cookies we gave out custom cookies at book bonanza she had a whole team in the background doing stuff that i didn't even know about i didn't even know about this team cuz she didn't want me to know she wanted it to be a surprise to me too she's just oh. she's amazing she really really is amazing so <laughs> She built this book up so much that it hit the ground running. Yeah, I think it's at number 52 in the store right now, I think. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. At, um, and I love the book. And Karen is more than in love with the book. <laughs> and I don't have a copy of the model cover, but there's a model cover as well. And the guy on the, on the front, his name is uh, Christian Petrovich, I think. And Karen calls her him her husband. <laughs> so Why not? Not? Why and he, he wrote he posted something today on Facebook and congratulating me on the book and all that. And I'm like, oh, your husband is two time and you he's talking to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Watch out. Yeah. <laughs> We need a Karen for like opinionated luscious. Our podcast. Yeah. We could yeah. Use a Karen. Karen. Yeah. Karen. You like whip you ladies into shape. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we Your need sometimes. Like, no, I'm the boss. And she's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you whatever think so? Yeah. I'll be like, no, I, I'm not doing that. She's like, I beg your pardon. <laughs> okay. So when, I guess when I, I am now. That? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I know um, you mentioned. Oh, oh go, go, go. Yeah. Go, go. 
don't know. You but I know, you, I know you mentioned that you have like baking and cooking in a lot of your books. So I was just wondering if there's anything else in your like your experience, life experience, education, jobs that you like to incorporate in most of your writing, if you can. A lot of my heroes are based on my husband, which is sounds sappy, but we've been married 34 years and he's, he's the biggest hero of my life. And in 34 years, there's never been a day gone by that he doesn't say, I love you. Hmm. There's never been an anniversary. He's missed a book release. There hasn't been flowers. He is, he is wonderful. He's just a wonderful guy. So there's a lot of him in my heroes. Um, I, I've been thinking of writing a football book. I was the now, you ladies are Hamilton. I was the senior director of ticket ops for the Hamilton Tiger Cats for 16 oh, years. Oh I used to God. be a scanner for the Hamilton Tiger Shut Cats up. at the arena. <laughs> yeah. okay, I, was well, I ran the box office. When the Tim Hortons ar arena first opened yes. um, and the scanners didn't work, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I was gone by then. <laughs> oh, we were told to just fake it. it. <laughs> we were told to just fake it, so yes. we did. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and you go. Yes. Um, so I know a lot. Well, I know more about football than I used to. So I've been thinking of trying to do a football related. Ooh, story. sports romance. Now we're talking. Yeah, that, that's very huge. I um, that that's sort of on the list. So we'll see if that happens. Um, I try and incorporate a lot of life my own life. There's a lot of me and a lot of my characters. Uh, Courtney from Over the Fence is very much me. It's very much my story that I just told in a book. Um, anything like funny conversations or things I see, I see things driving home and I, I see a couple or I see someone fighting and there's a story there. So everything around me can turn into a story. Um, if I really dislike someone, chances are you're in a book and I can <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Oh, that's a few times. <laughs> do not piss off Melanie. Don't you do it. it. You will be dead in the next book. <laughs> I just tell us I'm like, don't need you now. Nope. You're like, we're book, Matt you said to me, should you disguise the name a little more? Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> I was like, damn it. <laughs> their their real names are left in it you're like yeah. it's fine <laughs> lots of people are named that like yes. yeah <laughs> but you're like i want them to know like yeah. they, they're gonna so know the chances of them reading the book are slim to none but okay <laughs> just in case. one letter in the name that's totally disguised <laughs> disguised it <laughs> melanie what is the hardest thing about being an author Okay, you're going to laugh. These things. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lies, yeah, yeah. Meeting people. I'm a, I am I am the the perfect introvert. During COVID, when everyone else is like, oh, my God, can we get out? I'm like, oh. That was we weird. love COVID. I know. Same. <laughs> and, like, I'm fairly extroverted. But COVID, like, allowed me to choose who I want to, like, spend time with. Mm -hmm. Like, so I could be selective with that. And then I, I don't mind things like this online because, like, I'm wearing pajama pants right now. I'm not I don't know that. I'm so comfortable. <laughs> right? It's like, look, we're talking, but also in jammies. Like... <laughs> um, I find signings I find very hard because I'm very shy. But Karen is always with me. I think Karen is far more famous than I am. <laughs> Everyone knows Karen. and. They'll be talking to Karen and then they ask for an autograph and she's like, did you want my autograph or the author's? And they'll be like, oh, you're not Melanie? And then <laughs> she's like, no, that's the little one sitting here. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, those are probably the hardest things is be that part. Um, as for the work, sometimes when the words don't come, that's really hard. Um, this is my, I think, 47th book, 48th book. Wow. Um, yeah, impressive. Yeah, it's a lot of books. I mean, <laughs> compared to some authors, it's not. There's some authors who are out there every month with a release. I don't know how they do it. Um, but They're crazy. Uh, yeah. They, 
Well, they're younger too. I'm old. Um, it, uh, so sometimes when that happens, I find that frustrating, but I've learned because I am old and wise that when that happens, that's when I put it aside and I work on something else. I, I love to paint and decorate and do all sorts of stuff. So I find little hobbies to take my mind off it. And quite often the, the cogs are working up in here. It's suddenly it's like, oh, that's what you need. And I can go back to my book. Um, and then sometimes, you know, like with Dante, it's start to finish really fast. <laughs> um, are you more of a plotter or a pantser? Considering you write so fast, I'm curious. I'm an absolute pantser. <laughs> I, I, okay, I, I didn't want to, like, say, like, I assumed. Because I find, like, a lot of those that finish fast, it's because they just freaking right yes and i quite often i know the start of the story i know what the arc has to be and i know there's going to be happy ever after i have no idea what goes on in between and i just sit down and let the characters tell me and there's times i write chapter one chapter two chapter three and then chapter 16 17 18 and then i go back and write oh maybe nine and ten and then i'm like i need to join this i need to join this but I need to know what happens further on to know how to work backwards. It's very rare. I go from chapter one to the end. So oh, I'm all over the place. <laughs> so you're pantsing it all over. The all place. Over the place. <laughs> I wrote an outline once. And when the book finished and I went through the outline, aside from the title and the name of the character, there was nothing even remotely <laughs> close to it. And I'm like, why did I spend all that time writing out this? outline because I went to a course that said you should write an outline. So well, the course was wrong for you. The course was wrong for me. For a lot of, I know a lot of authors who write their outline and they check it off as it happens. When I looked at this document, I'm like, well, none of that happened. At all. <laughs> it's a whole different story. I got to write again. Like, geez. Like, maybe this is good for another day, but <laughs> it just, I'm an absolute pantser. That's amazing. Um, um the voice is on my head. Yeah, I know you keep like you're like ah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't. It's my fault. I do miss a lot of these. Um, so you know, I just want my voice heard. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy you're here, Sonia. Yes, yeah. yes. So you said your husband is in your books a lot, but I want your thought on book boyfriends. Um, like, do they exist or do they set the bar too high for real men, or do we actually want men to be like that? If I had to live with one of the broody, grumpy <laughs> people that I write, I would slap them up the head pretty damn fast and tell them to fuck off. Um, although Matthew can be grumpy, but um, I think book boyfriends are what we think we want. <laughs> if we actually had them, I don't know if we'd be happy unless... Of course, the billionaires, the billions do help <laughs> smooth out that grumpiness. It's, right. <laughs> um, it's the fantasy aspect. It's yes. like, it, you know, it's like, like a lot of my sexual fantasies. I know if they happened in real life, they wouldn't be as good. No, you know, not and really. then it ruins the fantasy because it's not fantasy anymore. You did it. So I feel like, you know what? Like, let's let it all stay in my head. Yes. It's, it's like the meeting your favorite celebrity. And they're an asshole. And yeah, then you never meet your idol. Gosh, never. <laughs> never. Never meet your favorite. I met, Don the first time I met Donny Osmond, I was crushed because he was an asshole. Aww. The next time I met him, I think he'd just been having a bad day. He was very nice. But it sort of it was like, I should no, you better, can, can you X out his name? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I can X out his yes. name. Yes. I'll just bleep it. Beep. <laughs> Melanie Moreland sued. <laughs> You're allowed to not like people. I don't think that's against the law. Okay. Yeah, um, you just can't it, say like any untrue facts about them. Yeah. So if he's actually an asshole, was an asshole that day. Well, they hey, that's true. Yeah. That's not I, slander. Was, if it's he true, he was probably just having a bad day. He was fine <laughs> the next time, but the first meeting sort of was like it made me a little. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure it's that way with people meet authors. Sometimes they disappoint you. Now at Book Bonanza, I got to meet one of my unicorn authors. And it was amazing. Which um, author? <laughs> uh, Jody 
uh, Malpas? I don't know her. This no. this man. It, it came out oh. years ago. The whole You're this like, oh, no, we don't know them. Okay. <laughs> I, know. I was like, what? I don't actually know this one. Now I'm confused. I normally know everyone, but um, she. I just love her and she's English and I was in our, we both have the same PR and I was in the room at book Bonanza having coffee in the morning and she walked into the room and I'm a very calm, fairly steady person. And I was like, Holy shit, that's Jody. And Karen's <laughs> like, yeah, she's here. You should go say hi. I don't know what happened to me. I'm at a, in a, at a, in front of a patio door and I suddenly backed into the glass and I went, I cannot. And she's like, <laughs> what? It's like, did you just become English? <laughs> like, like, I cannot speak with her. And she's like, okay. And her friend and my someone we both know, Kim, went over and brought her over to say hello. And I was absolutely gobsmacked and I burst into tears. Aww. Which when people stand in front of me and cry, I'm like, oh God, what are you doing? Suddenly <laughs> <I'm excited. laughs> emotions stop. Yes. <laughs> Just no 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 tears. Um and she was lovely. She was absolutely lovely. Um and Aww. she gave me a hug and we chatted for 10 minutes and it was great. And then I put something on my page saying I'd met her and how excited I was. And a friend of hers saw it and sent it to her. And she responded with Melanie was lovely. So I've decided that we're best friends now. Obviously. And, obviously. and help her with everything. Yeah. That, that is the beginning of every friendship. Like Absolutely. That, I, the, it's how we're going to go to her house for Christmas. Okay. Like you right. on the podcast, <laughs> and now we're going over for Christmas. That's right. <laughs> The invitation's uh, out there. You can't take it back now. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Melanie. <laughs> yes, yeah. so friends are something we think we want, we will never achieve, and it's probably for the best. Yeah, I find a lot of uh, personalities in book boyfriends are not for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> no. No. I don't like them. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you like them. <laughs> but I read like a lot of dark, dark stuff. So I mean. Eh. Bummer. I like I wear the pants in my relationship, so I want some loss of control. Like, geez. Um, so the books I have read from you, uh, a lot of them are based in Canada. Now, is that a theme with your books, or are was I just the lucky one to like pick those, and the the rest are not in Canada? There's only I think two of my books that are not in Canada, um, okay. mostly because I know Canada. I know our laws, I know our language, I know geography, I know all sorts of stuff. Um, and I'm just more comfortable setting them in Canada because there's not a lot of books that are set in Canada. There's not. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Now, a few, most of my books are set in fictitious towns in yeah. Canada. People <laughs> write me and say, where is Port Albany? I'm like, there is no Port Albany. <laughs> so it's a, it's Grimsby and Niagara on the Lake and something else all rolled in together in my head. It doesn't really exist. Um, but yes, I, I like to set them in Canada. I, now my characters don't say A, I don't think. <laughs> that's like such like part of our language like we don't actually notice when we're saying it unless like we're talking to american friends or like oh like oh man it's a hot one eh? and then they're like a like we never actually notice we say it until like an american put points it out to us I'm like oh yes. eh? well it's same with the canadian rise right like how when we talk we constantly go up at the end of our sentences until we're finally done talking and then we go down yeah. And that's permission for the next person to talk. Yeah. Like, you know, it's and code, right? I yeah. didn't notice that until like someone else pointed it out. And even Mike Myers like pointed it out. Like for Wayne's World, he just over dramatized the Canadian rise. Like, yeah, like it was just everything was just up until you're done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you apologize. That's yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and my favorite part about Canadian language is like I don't know how you'd write this because I feel like this needs body language, but it's when people go, "Yeah, sure, no, for sure, yeah, yeah. sure, yeah, no, <laughs> no, I'll, yeah, I'll, no, yeah, sure. yeah, no," like a whole conversation of just yeah, no, for sure. 
my <laughs> my editor quite often puts little notes. I'm not sure if this is Canadian, but we don't do this here. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't know what this means. Is this Canadian? And I'm like, seriously, you guys don't do that? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. okay I'll take it out and it yes. it up a little bit for me. And I'm like, you guys are boring. Just like they don't use the, the use. Oh it's, yeah, yeah. And their yeah. letter is like, come yeah, on, yeah. They're, they're trying, to, and, they're trying yeah. to be very like eccentric. They're like, listen, like we just want to be cool in our own person. Let's just take away the use, man. We don't need them. Yep. Nope. <laughs> and, and check. You know, I can't. Oh yes. HF is like a check, and I'm like, no, yeah. check has a Q U. Yeah. Like, oh, there yeah. We go use again. I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't put pay check. That's not right. The right, you're check. That's checking something. Yes. Go, yeah. you're wrong. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I always do pay stub, pay period. Yeah. But check. <laughs> Every time I write favorite, and I always put the U in there, yeah. and they're just like, that's not how it's spelled. I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> like, the I know rest the, of fact, the world spells it that way. The fact that they will argue with you about the spelling as if like there's not other countries. No. Well, honestly no. not. <laughs> as soon as I told Lisa my the name of the book, she's like, without a you. I said <laughs> there'll be no you in favorite. So it would be wrong from the get-go. And she's like, no. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. But and I just like that argument. Yeah. You know, and then zebra. Yes. Oh man, don't get it. Don't get it. Like I'm like people are like, why do you call it zebra? I'm like, it's Debra the Zebra. It's not Debra the Zebra. That doesn't rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> like, geez. Geez. Um, is there like something you have to do to kind of get into the mood to write? Or are you just like so because you're so prolific, you're just able to just turn it on and start um i have to be sitting in my favorite chair which is behind me um i have to have coffee close i drink a lot of coffee <laughs> so do we so <laughs> absolute quiet absolute mm. quiet i can't have music playing i can't have my husband's football game on if it is i have to shut the door and i put on my noise counseling headphones if i don't have quiet i can't write Yet I, every other moment of the day, music is playing in the house. I've got wireless speakers in every room. But as soon as I try and write, if music is playing, I get so lost in the music, I forget to write. So I need absolute quiet. But I can, I usually get up about six and I can, I get my coffee. I come in here and I start to write and I write straight through to eight o'clock. And as soon as I open the laptop, and look at the last sentence. I just keep going. So that's an amazing skill. Yeah. <laughs> like quiet, but if it's on a day where I sleep in a little and Matthew's home and he starts puttering around, I find it very distracting. Now he, mm. he retires next month. So, oh no. Uh -oh. We're not sure. Karen's Ooh. not happy about this. <laughs> Does he have any hobbies? <laughs> well, he's decided to um volunteer with meals on wheels and at the hospital escorting oh. around and do that two or three days a week. And I said, that's fine. I agreed to cut back a little on my writing. So those days when you're out volunteering, I can write. And I bought him tickets to the tiger cat season for the next couple of years. <laughs> yes. know he's gone for that. <laughs> and I told our, um, we live in a condo community and I told our, project manager that Matthew would be more than happy to help out. <laughs> was, anything needs done. Anything Matthew, that needs yeah. done. Him off. Off. Like, <laughs> um, but no, I can write anywhere, really, as long as it's quiet. That's good. Yeah, uh, that's um, that's awesome. I mean, like, once again, you're like, bragging about how amazing your man is, which is fine, I guess. Like, <laughs> not all of us can be so lucky, you know. The world is. <sighs> I'm kidding, because we all are in long term relationships. We're, we're all married. Yeah, we're all married. married. We all have kids. <laughs> like, I, I'm the baby, and I've my relationship's almost ten years long. So, but <laughs> you know, so you're there just is just letting him in. Yeah. yeah, right. It takes a while. 
<laughs> John, John tells me that the training is like forever. Yeah, and I think I think I still have a little work to do, but I'm almost there. <laughs> almost. I've, I've been at it 34 right. years. There's still work to be done. <laughs> oh no, 20 years. I'm not 20 us. years. What are you talking about? <laughs> no. That's the there, girls. <laughs> Damn it! I thought we were at the home stretch. Lifelong okay. project. That is like never bored, right? <laughs> no, you got years to beat out of them. Oh, <laughs> fantastic! <laughs> Damn it! I, that that abused hotline for husbands is going to get used a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, Domri, this is my final question. So. <laughs> <laughs> interrupt you yeah but she's prepping just in case I just you did. let you know okay <laughs> okay bitch um <laughs> is there anything you'd like people to take away from this book specifically like you hope they like like it catches on like they don't miss it like you want to make sure that everyone gets to read this specific part of the book yes actually there's <laughs> a scene she i she's a curvy girl in the book She's not a svelte, you know, six foot blonde model. I don't write those because I don't know them. <laughs> I'm a curvy <laughs> girl. So she's a little self-conscious and he um, he has a very heart to heart chat with her in front of a mirror, showing her all the ways he's how beautiful she is to him. And she realizes that maybe she is too harsh on herself. And I think we're all too hard on herself so that scene actually made Karen cry so that was a bonus for me um and I'd like everyone to read that and take away the fact that we're all beautiful we're all beautiful in different ways and but we tend to see the six foot four absolutely gar gorgeous Charlene Theron or whatever and we we judge ourselves against that and we should judge ourselves against the beauty that we all have inside of us on the outside, inside, everything. And he wanted her to know all the ways that she's beautiful, inside and out to him. And it was a very touching scene. So I, I hope when people read it, that even though it's a funny, lighthearted book, they read that scene and realize we all have that beauty to offer. Agreed. Aww, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we're all like, I'm a curvy girl. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. five foot two, very squishy. Uh, <laughs> I am Danny DeVito with the vagina. <laughs> okay. It's fantastic. I love me. And it took a long time for me to appreciate me. Uh, so I think definitely that's a lesson a lot of anybody, men, women, non-binary yep. people should be taking. Absolutely. Everyone's beautiful. Everyone is beautiful in their own way. Because if we all look the same, the world would be really boring. Exactly. I agree. So, and love tends to help you see the beauty in somebody else. Yes. 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 Um, what advice would you give inspiring authors just starting out? <sighs> Find your people. Find the people that you trust. Make them your team. Um. And I mean, my beta makes me cry every book because she rips it to apart. And I cry every book and every book she's damn well right. So I've learned I need that tough love from her. Um, Karen knocks me around all the time, <laughs> but she's always truthful. She'll say to me, that scene doesn't work. And I'll be like, what? Ah! <laughs> what she, most of the time she's right most of the time karen um <laughs> karen are you listening <laughs> um find the people that you trust that will guide you the way you need to be guided because this is the book world is wonderful but there's a lot of really hard lessons you have to learn and i've learned a lot of them um find your people listen to them and trust your gut trust your instincts and fight for your words because they're your words and your words mean a lot um i don't stick to my i i write romance but i don't stick to my genre i've written rom-coms i've written angsty i've written uh suspense i've written all of it and i never there's some authors who have their this is what they write old you know 
mature couples or this couple or that couple. I write them all. Um, You're tapping in all niches. You're like, yes. we're doing it all. Yes. All. <laughs> the only thing I haven't done is blue haired testicles. If they've got tentacles, they probably have the blue testicles. <laughs> I that's the, the name of book. the book that's the name of the book it's blue <laughs> testicles and then it's like tentacles coming out like that's on the cover <laughs> art you write the word tentacles yeah there. <laughs> oh lord we just wrote your next book there you too much vodka <laughs> okay I have one last question and it is what advice would you give to new and aspiring authors I just asked that. Oh, did you did you just ask that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow, Jessica's been drinking. <laughs> no, I do this That's every time. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that my question word for word? What I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I blame <laughs> apparently I do the back of their testicles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm gonna put your brain. Oh my god. I guess I don't have any questions. I'm good. <laughs> I have one more. Um Do you want me to give you uh, author advice? <laughs> Wait, no, done. Did you write today? No, but I will after this. Okay, good. So it counts as today. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Um so I know personally you do have arc teams, but um, if anyone wanted to become on your arc team, how would they go about it? Um, there's my group on Facebook. It's called Melanie's Minions. Um, and Karen puts out forms every so often when we have openings in the arc team. Or if you go to my website, there's a contact form there and you can fill the contact out form out. And Karen takes care of all that because, again, Melanie's not allowed to touch it. <laughs> um, um, there might even be a few openings on the art team right now. I don't know. She, I know um, she clears it out every so often and gets new blood in. And I don't understand it all. I just write the books. That's my job. I do it. And I give it to Karen. And what she does with it after that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to clarify the name, because I, I just looked at Facebook right now. Is it Melanie's Minions, Melanie's Moreland's Reader Group? Is yeah. that? Yes. yes. Yeah. Join. Okay. <laughs> <Yay>. Deny. <laughs> <laughs> she's not getting my tentacle That's board. Not, she's like, no. they're not. <laughs> they're <laughs> those hairy blue balls. No, no. <laughs> They're tentacles. Wouldn't that make it reptilian? I think she's uh, referring to the testicles. The testicles. Yeah, but is it, te is it te okay? I'm imagining it testicles on a tentacle creature. <laughs> is that not horrible? You got tentacles. There's balls hanging off of everything. Oh my god! I thought it was some sexy tentacle beasts that were no guys, and they have to be blue. Oh well, goodness. the whole thing is blue, obviously, as tentacles. What color are tentacles? <laughs> Purples, blues, greens. Right? And hair, apparently. Apparently, <laughs> so this is like a platypus. Platypus, <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> wow. We have this story halfway written for you, Melanie. All right, <laughs> look at us go. I expect I'm them not so going to be sorry. done by tomorrow. <laughs> oh, oh Ooh. good Lord. Okay, well, I think this is a good place for Melanie to plug all of her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, oh, boy. Okay, I, I know I'm on Instagram as Melanie Moreland. Um, I'm on, oh, God. Tiki talk, talky tick tock. Yep. And as I think more than Melanie, it's one of them. Um, I'm not allowed on there either. I tried to put something up and Karen told me I was ruining her algorithm. So I stopped. <laughs> um, oh my God. She has me everywhere. There's like Pinterest or see, I don't even know the names. 
It's okay. We will have all the links in the description below, as well as your website scrolling there. So anyone yes. that's watching the video can see the link there. I, I am in my group every day, the Melanie Moreland Minion Reader Group. Um, we have a lot of fun there. We do a lot of giveaways. We do games for this for this book we had a cake bake off where we all decorated cakes and people oh. judged them mine was pretty sick looking i <laughs> bake really well but i don't decorate so good. that's my problem i can bake the shit out of anything decoration no it's too piddly I, baking I you see it really fast you bake it it's done decorating you're going to get the little i things. can't even ice it i think <laughs> you and sonia should go on uh nailed it and, uh, on one of those episodes oh my god some of those things on sd or when they like nailed it the, the lamb cakes that look like yeah and they're so yeah. bad <laughs> that would be me yeah um Same. i saw you too don't worry I, I put little rosettes on the cake and then I got little um, little bee sticks and I stuck them all over the cake and that was mine. And then I saw some of the cakes some of my readers did. They were gorgeous, like beautifully decorated, layered cupcakes. I'm like, oh, for God's sake, I got to show this piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I got to go to the grocery store. I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. Go, to, you go to the store and get me a cake, just something simple. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have lots of fun in the reader group. There's always giveaways. You usually get to see the covers first and you get excerpts and hints and all sorts of stuff. So that's a great place to be. And then all the other social media wonderful places. <laughs> I know I have a YouTube channel I, that people put videos up. I think it's Melanie Moreland, probably. <laughs> um so there, there's yes if you guys uh put all those up that would be a big help yep, <laughs> and bleep, got bleep you. Out that, the name that i asked you to bleep out <laughs> yeah i will don't you worry no one will know <laughs> and then people are gonna listen to this and they'll be like okay hey, well what was the name now and there'll be a guessing game yeah, well, it, it is on YouTube. Come to Melanie Miller. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I want to thank you again, Melanie, for coming on uh, and being Canadian. Because that's yeah, cool. from like, Hamilton. Because we're amazing, eh? Yeah, <laughs> not just Canadian, but Hamiltonian. Absolutely yeah. Better. <laughs> right, yeah. Near us. Oski, the Oski, Wawa. Holy Mackinac, Thai cats, Eat them raw. Eat them raw. Yeah. And everyone else will go, what? What is happening? <laughs> to be fair, I lived in some like southern Ontario, but in a different city, and I moved here and then got the job of the Thai cats and heard that. And I also was like, what the fuck is this? I know. The <laughs> first time I heard that, I'm like, that doesn't even make any sense. I know. Same. It doesn't, but it's our childhood. Like, they, <laughs> you're in kindergarten and they make you chant this, okay? Like, yeah. this is it. Right of passage in Hamilton. You're growing up and you have to say it. It was part of my job training. <laughs> like, <laughs> chant this. Yeah. You don't have like, a job if you can't chant this. <laughs> pretty much. I was like, oh, okay. I'll just say those words. Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> but well, thank you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but thank you again so much for coming on. Again, all of Melanie's links will be in the description below. Uh, and yeah, I'm definitely coming over around Christmas time for all those baked goods. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm coming <laughs> over too. We'll have so to fly Sonia out. out. Yeah, we got to fly <laughs> Sonia out so she can come for Christmas too. There okay. we go. <laughs> You're having a house full of guests now. Yeah. <laughs> Or three of us because i'm leaving <laughs> i'm leaving the husband and kids at home yeah, yeah. I'm not those. sorry matthew We're just... <laughs> go see jessica's husband <laughs> yeah oh we can ship him off here yeah got a plan already see it's working i'll out. send dave and the kids over to your house too with them like oh Bye. we just leave all the men and children here and then we all go to <laughs> melanie's house that I'm sent down. Like a plan. Tell <laughs> Karen. Meet us there. Yeah, Karen. Karen will plan the logistics. <laughs> you have no idea what you've just opened. <laughs> Actually, we did. You did. Yeah, that was the invitation. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so, thank you again, everyone. Remember that we have uh, Books of Booze season two is back. So check out for our episodes every uh, Thursday. For the most part, <laughs> so yeah, for, the most this, part. Yeah. for the most part, I mean, it, we're, our books and booze series is released every Thursday, it released mostly Thursdays. So uh, check us out. Make sure to give us a follow. Check out Melanie's all the links in the, in the description and we will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.